Hello and welcome back to this van conversion series. Please like and subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss an episode. We will be following our conversion of a Citroen Relay L3 H2 week by week. So if you missed last week's video, you can see it in the link here. This week, I'll be looking at the Truma Combi boiler install, fitting the water plumbing, installing the door cads and working on the cupboard fronts. Hello everyone, so week five on the van conversion and we have got most of the carcassing outside of the van. Uh, we're painting, so we're getting base layers and top coats on. You can see the boiler unit here, uh, one of the overhead cupboards. Uh, yes, the steward's just working on the seat boxes at the moment over there. I'll show you inside the van. Uh, it's pretty empty at the moment because all the units are outside. Uh, but I've obviously worked on the battery unit in the box seat at the back. Uh, the door cads are now back on after I took them off to paint the glass. You can see the bit at the bottom there. Uh, that's just going to get covered by a windowsill. So here's the Truma. I've now screwed this down using these factory fitted screws. Two, three, and then one on the other side, four. I've made the electrical connections in here. Um, you can see the cables are, if I can open it. You've got your 12 volt supply, your temperature sensor, and then your data cable. And those will run, we've uh, cable tied them up. And they run to the uh, necessary positions in the van. So what I'll do now is I'll start to make the connections with the hot water, cold water, and then I'll leave the gas, but I might cut the drop vent uh, for the LPG part to run uh, to the manifold. Uh, I've put this in just before the unit goes in just so that I've got good access to all of the screws to make sure that it's securely fitted in and it's going to have four heat ducts coming out the back. One's going to go to the shower which is about here. One is going to come just out the skirting board here. One is going to come at the other end of the skirting board in the living space and then one is going to go through the wheel arch box and just warm up the garage space. Uh, it'll be quite nice under bed heating as well. So yeah, all four ducts are recommended to be used so um, we don't block up any of them. Um, and yeah, we're gonna have them evenly spread from the front of the van all the way to the back of the van. So I'm now gonna start the water pump installation. We've got the Sherflow water pump here on the left and this is a, an accumulator and what this does is it stops the pump from kicking in and out um, needlessly it kind of dampens the pressure within the pipework if it's um if all the taps are shut so it stops this from kicking in and out um, i've always used these two together and we've they've worked really well um, the threaded connections here can cause quite an issue um, with the water system the push pit push fit pipes from john guest are really good um, and if there are any leaks it's normally caused from a threaded connection what we use is some PTFE tape just to make a couple of turns on the threaded connections um, and this should help to just seal up the joint and make it watertight. So I'll do that now and then we'll get the uh, rest of the installation done. Moving on to some of the plumbing in the van, we're going to look to install the shower mixer bar. It's going to go on this wall here uh, and it will pass through the wall into the wardrobe unit where we'll be able to box the pipes in. Uh, what we like to use is a domestic mixer bar so you can get this in silver or we like matte black um, and we like to mount this using a mixer bar like fixing plate and this can screw um, into a block onto the wall and you can see that it's nice and rigid um, so that that mixer bar won't be moving at all uh, once this is in place we just need to replace the um, compression olives and the brass uh, nuts um, which is meant for domestic 15 mil copper pipe we're going to swap them out for some John Guest uh, plastic push fit um, converter adapter pieces. This converts it from a, a half inch BSP uh, threaded connection, which is obviously the same as, as this, uh, and then it connects it to a 12 mil push fit pipe. So we need these adapters and this uh, adapter plate just so that we can uh, make things nice and sound. So this is the mixer bar mounting plate from the back. You can see obviously we've got the cold feed and the hot feed. I've just put this packer in here just to stop it getting clamped completely so that you can still 
loosen or tighten this nut if you need to. But essentially this is screwed in to the 18mm uh, ply so that this is completely solid on this side. And then as I go round, you can see the threaded uh, connection here. This is completely solid as well. So we will need to just get the mixer bar um, screwed onto these. We may need to trim down the shrouds slightly because um, obviously they're for a domestic house but we'll make them fit and look nice around the uh, mixer bar here so yeah that's how we install uh, the mixer bar plate which makes this really nice and secure today I'm going to be doing a bit of work underneath the van uh, obviously we've got the kitchen unit overhanging the door and the shower unit on the driver side so the water supply we need to just run a short run of hot and cold water underneath the van and we're going to be using these pipe lagging as well just to provide some insulation it's going to be about a 1 meter 1.2 meter run underneath um, the van and what we use to help when we're underneath the van is we've got these uh, three and a half ton rated ramps uh, really useful just drive up on them uh, put the handbrake on and then obviously at the back we've got a, a stop block behind the back wheel so yeah just lifts the van up a bit more makes it nice and easy when you're under the van you can see the uh, LPG gas tank has now been installed and that's just behind the exhaust unit and in front of the two water tanks and that's just held up. Uh, it can be retrofitted with the uh, brackets that you get from uh, Gasset uh, but it's yet to have the regulator and the filler hose installed uh, but we can show you that when they're, when they're in. But yeah, that's what the van looks like underneath and we'll now get the pipes run uh, in that insulation uh, from the near side to the off side. So here's a hole saw I've cut in the van uh, using a 51 millimeter hole saw on my drill. Uh, this will allow the water to pass from the uh, near side to the off side in its insulation. I like to use these uh, drop vents um, to obviously um, create a finish on these and also it prevents chafing. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to protect the raw metal. Um, we've obviously deburred it using the deburring tool and I'm going to use this underbody spray. Um, what I'll do first is I'll tape up on top of it, go underneath and just get a good coat of underbody spray uh, up into that, into this area here. And then when I put this on, uh, once that's dry, I put this on and then we seal it up from underneath so that no under spray uh, can get inside um, the uh, flooring. Uh, when we've got, this is going to be the pipe for the uh, fresh water tank coming up. Uh, because obviously there will be a small gap, we're going to fill that with spray foam. And that will just, um, if you're parking off grid, uh, prevent sort of creeper crawlies and sort of little field mouses and that from being able to get up into the living space of the van. So looking at the hole from underneath the van, you can see we've got the underbody spray, which is uh, protecting the raw uh, cut metal. And then we've also got the um, drop down vent and we've sealed it using black Sudaflex uh, just to prevent any water being able to get inside the flooring layers. So that's all sealed up now and I've cut a, a small hole uh, to receive the two water pipes to drop down. So progress with the pipe runs. You can see the hot and cold feed going into the shower mixer bar, which comes through the wall there. That goes down through this hole here, which will sit beside the fridge. Um, through the floor and the gland and then it comes up this side in the uh, sink unit obviously to go up into the sink and the external shower point as well hot and cold feeds I'm just underneath the van now just working on the pipe lagging so I'll just show you what it looks like um, you've got obviously your hot and your cold pipes coming down and what I like to do is I like to do this in one continuous run uh, so there's no uh, fittings there's no elbow joints uh, just so that uh, obviously in in really bad weather if there is freezing uh, they're not gonna sort of damage the fittings um, of the push fit fitting so run it in pipe lagging um, and yeah keep the runs as short as possible so you can see uh, we'll obviously fix that up into the top of the uh, under the floor there and it goes up through the other side Here you can see Stuart working on the sliding door CAD. Um, we've removed this just so that we can sand off all of the uh, filler around the architrave. 
and apply a top coat of paint. Um, you can see how it's uh, nicely removable as a single piece, uh, like the rear door cads. Uh, this is made out of six mil poplar plywood and the screws you can see here, when they're screwed in, they're just, um, we have a white uh, screw cap so that they can be removed if you need to get access to the door mechanisms in the future. So the only thing left to go on here is the um, windowsill, but that will just um, fit onto the base uh, batten and again, we'll still keep uh, removable uh, for the future. We've been making all of the cupboard fronts. Uh, you can see them here on the table. We've got the overhead cupboard fronts over there. And then these are the overhead fronts for the kitchen unit and the pantry unit here. And what we've got is a double layer uh, door front. Uh, the baseboard is 12 mil poplar plywood and then the shaker style border we've made out of 6 mil MDF and we've just applied some wood glue to the base of each piece and then used a brad nail to nail this in. It's 40 mil wide um, and then once we've done that we've sanded it all back and applied some two part filler to hide um, the grooves and yeah once this is all uh, primed and, and painted they'll look really nice and we can put the uh, the hardware on, the handles and the hinges. So you can see the surrounds on the cupboard fronts have been put in and we've just dry fitted them to the frame before paint just to be happy with the sizing. We've got these spring loaded hinges on the back and what they do is they hold it open. So this is the near side overhead the longer of the two, you can see we've got a nice even space between each of the doors. And then there's a little shelf down there, which will have a nice little bit of cladding put on the front of it. So yeah, really happy with what this looks like. Uh, we're now dry fit the cupboard fronts on the kitchen unit and get these overheads uh, frames put in so we can get the cupboard fronts uh, painted and then ready to go in. So it's the end of week five and we've made really good progress so far. Um, we've got a lot of the carcassing built now. Um, you can see the overheads are in and secured. Uh, the door cads are in as well. Um, we've also got the uh, rear uh, box seat in. A little heat vent coming out here from the Truma. Um, and the Truma itself has been installed. You can see uh, just looking underneath in the boiler compartment. Uh, we've got the Truma. I just need to cut the drop vent for the gas uh, and make the electrical connections but the hot and cold water feed are, um, are made. We've got a little isolation tap on the hot, on the hot um, outlet there. Um, and the drop down vent, sorry, the, the drain down valve is uh, installed as well. And that allows you to empty the boiler in the winter months um, so that it prevents a damage to the boiler if the water inside freezes. You wanna drain this down by lifting up this yellow valve here. Uh, there's also a non-return valve on the cold feed. I don't know if you can see in there. So just before the check valve, sorry, the drain down valve, there's a non-return valve and that prevents the water from flowing back through the cold pipe. Um, we've run a, a vent, heat vent into the shower cubicle and we've also run the pipe work um, from the near side where the sink unit's gonna be under the van and comes up just below the shower, shower cubicle. Uh, that feeds the mixer bar up here, uh, the hot and cold feed, and then obviously it tees off uh, to, to go towards the boiler as well. Um, we've also got a couple of holes for the uh, toilet vent pipe and electrical connection for the 12 volt fan. Uh, the pantry unit is in, uh, the door fronts are made and they've been dry fitted, uh, but they're just out getting painted at the moment and also the wardrobe we've got the base shelf in uh, and we've started we've marked out where we're going to put these strips because this this wardrobe is going to have shelving uh, rather than a, a clothes rail so yeah the shower room uh, started to get silicon now you can see i just need to make a connection for the light up top um, but all, all the walls are in shower trays in and the mixer bar is also in and that's nice and solid, no movement on that whatsoever because we've obviously used this, uh, this plate here screwed into the wall and it works really well.
so yeah lots done this week and this uh really looking forward to next week where we'll start to get the uh, worktops cut uh, the ceiling slats made and yeah start getting the uh, kitchen unit and the rear box seats back into the van so stay tuned for the next episode